Hey, everybody, and we are so glad that you are joining us. Um, now, this episode in particular, Matt has no idea what we're going to be talking about. It was all a complete surprise. I know this is going to actually blow his mind. It's something that uh, I guess we've talked about for years, almost since we've known each other. And then more recently, it has come up again because of a certain situation that occurred uh, with Matt. And so here we are now, Matt. He's yeah. looking concerned, right? Well, yeah. Are you, are you, <laughs> do, you, do you know maybe what I'm talking about, this certain incident that may have occurred? But <laughs> not between us, but with you in particular. Well, it's been a long year, so <laughs> there is kind of a lot to pick from. You know, like when you're a kid and you get in trouble and your parents are like, I know what you did and you start crying and they're like, well, now you confirm that you did something. So I'm over here like, <laughs> I ain't admitting shit. <laughs> okay, y'all. So here's the deal. This is what happened in the past handful of years. I think maybe I don't, two years, maybe. I don't know. Time is so weird these days. But anyway, uh, guys, Matt wrote a book. Okay. Yeah. So he wrote a book. Uh, June of now, Matt. When I... What's uh what's going on here? I read the book. What? <laughs> <laughs> Did you really? Yes. And also, Matt, I've started reading a book a week. <laughs> Cody does not like to read. I can read now, Matt. Oh, you learned how to read? <laughs> See, we all have done something through the pandemic. I learned uh, yes. Cody learned how to read. Oh my God, you guys, this is growth. This is what this podcast. <laughs> so if you have been with us at any point uh, throughout our podcast journey over the last, I don't know, handful of years that we've actually been doing this, the early years were rough. I know there's probably a lot of new uh, viewers to our show. And uh, again, welcome to our show. Uh, we hope you have fun and we talk about fun things. But uh, throughout the, our podcast journey up over the past handful of years, uh, I think before the, the pandemic, like a year or two before that. But uh, yeah, that has been a running thing that I don't read books. I don't care to read books. So Cody has said he has had a surprise for me for weeks. And I was like, I don't know what it could be. So and here's the deal. <laughs> I couldn't post about this. At all. And there's been times, if you, Matt knows this, I love posting pictures on Instagram or Snapchat or whatever it may be of me doing things. And there's been many, many times in which I've wanted to post a picture of me with coffee at a coffee shop reading a book. And I've been unable to post it because we've been unable to record and we're finally recording this episode so that I can now finally uh, uh, come out to Matt that I read books. <laughs> I'm coming out as literate. <laughs> so I so here the background. I've never really read books since high school, and then in, even in high school, I did not read the books. I just like uh, looked up Cliff notes, notes and uh, okay. yeah, Spark Notes, and uh, that was it. Um, anyway, so I started reading books, and um, I started off. I with, published this book in June of 2021. So I went back and looked at the date that you actually did it, and I was like, oh my god, that's actually a long long time ago <laughs> i've written most of, i've written like half the sequel <laughs> um so i started off with a book uh called fake dates and mooncakes oh my god loved it i hope someone turns it into a movie it's so cute absolutely loved it then my second book was matt's book now how do you say this matt how, what, how, the ashen 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 yeah the ashen chronicles that was my second book I wanted to post about that, but couldn't. My third book that I read that I also wanted to post about, but I couldn't, was Red, White, and Royal Blue because I had to read it before I watched the movie. Then oh. I had to watch the movie. Oh, my God. Loved it. <laughs> Loved it so much. Uh, I cried in that book constantly. I cried in uh, Mooncakes. Uh, I might have teared up a tiny bit at one point in this book. Uh, but anyway. In mine? I read books, Matt. So... No, I mean, today. did you like, okay, we have to talk about this. Did you like so, it? So today we are going to talk about your book, Matt. Oh, this whole episode is based on you. Okay, y'all. So again, Bachelor Chronicles, Matt's yes. book, 
finally <laughs> read it. This is his first book in a series of books that he's going to do. So uh, I didn't know what to expect from Matt's book. He never really told me anything about his book. Wait, hold like, on. Let's talk about that. There's a reason why. I know that Cody doesn't love to read. And I didn't want to, I don't think it's good to force your first things onto your friend. So I, of course I talked to him about it because, and he knew about it because he was so excited. Yeah, I knew about it. But I did not expect him to actually to buy it or interact with it because, you know, it, he doesn't really enjoy reading. So that's not why I wrote the book. I wrote it for myself as it's kind of a love letter to, to David because he was so supportive of me through everything I've ever wanted to do. And it's filled with all the things that I think we find interesting because it's a shared interest like fantasy stuff for fun. You know, it's just a place to escape for a bit. So I never, Cody promised me he would read it, but I was like, you really don't have to. And I won't take it personally. It's really okay. So I, I did to you like how I'm on camera right now. So I can't be super emotional, but like, I'm like, I did read his book and downloaded the Kindle version. So I just want to point that out. He didn't give me a copy. So y'all go get a copy. If you've not bought a copy. Okay. So, uh, I really liked the book, uh, and I, I think I loved like the whole fantasiness of it, and like you really got involved. And I honestly, I feel like we're just getting started with the story. I feel like we were like, we we got a story out, but now I feel like there's so much more that you're wanting to know. You you like it seems like it's like a prequel, Matt. You've like teased us now, and like we're like, ah, uh, it's a girl, full book series. Hurry up. The, the series is mapped out and I actually don't totally know what's going to happen. My writing process is pretty simple. When I know what I want to happen as an event, I work backwards to see what it would take for characters to make those decisions. Because yeah. what I don't like when I read is like when characters make an out of totally out of character decision for no reason, everybody goes against the grain of their character sometimes, but like when it magically happens every single time to save the day, every single time, I'm like, no, that doesn't happen. Literally, unless you're precognitive, that doesn't happen. <laughs> okay. So Matt, uh, so his book, basically there is like evil that's causing an outbreak, uh, violence, an illness in this land. Uh, and there is like, I think like four characters in particular that like go this on this journey weird. to discover uh, what, is causing this outbreak. So I that is kind of the the highlight. I don't want to give anything away on that because if I you just, haven't read it, uh, everybody go check out his book. Again, it's, on it's on Amazon. It's on Amazon. Okay, so Matt, you talked about just a second ago, you mentioned uh, what inspired you to delve into this world of this fantasy and fiction. Kind of explain what, what caused you to want to write about fantasy and fiction uh, in this particular way. My, <laughs> I'm so caught off guard. Oh my gosh. I'm so sorry, everyone. I'm, I'm really sorry. Um, <laughs> I, <laughs> I was just not prepared for this. You know, I, th this is why I like getting off guard. You're getting a real reaction, <laughs> but yeah. So you know, like what caused you to delve into that world well, of fantasy or was there a specific event or yeah. thought that triggered the idea for the book? Yes. And yes to all of that. Um, I always liked fantasy because as a kid, uh, I did not always feel so great as a child. Um, so I love to read. I, I learned to become like almost a prodigal reader uh, because my mom would play these speech games with me to help with my speech therapy mm -hmm. and unintentionally turned me into this like prodigal reader. And I loved to read. And I realized that the way when I read, um, as I developed better, um, you know, uh, language comprehension skills, and they developed really early intention, like because of, my mom just would, it was a game to me. And my mom and I would play these alphabet games and word games and she likes to read and my grandfather likes to read. So, um, and it was a, a what better way to keep a six year old quiet? Oh my gosh. <laughs> so I was allowed to read whatever. And I got the, yeah. whole, you know, books aren't books are books and they're not real. Don't, you know, don't, you can't fly. Don't jump off the couch. You know, like cartoons aren't real. Books aren't real. Like, well, I mean, yeah, when you're when you're little and you whether you're reading a book or you're watching like a little cartoon like Peter Pan or something, you like you as a young little kid think that that is real. Like you could do that. That whole fantasy right. world creates in your head like, oh, my God, the world is so cool. Yeah. When I was in sixth grade, I did this huge project on um, the pyramids of, of Giza in Egypt. Yeah. And I was so fascinated by 
the culture, the the layers to like how well it's studied. And I watched every special and documentary I could. And oops, I think my family learned way more about Egypt than they ever wanted to know. And for a history project I did in sixth grade, my grandmother helped me build them all to scale. And then below that, I had printed out and written out explanations of like how they were made, you know, and how they got there and how the slaves were just mercilessly beaten. So in writing this book, the main character was based out of this world that I imagined, you know, my little 10 year old mm-hmm. version. And then as an adult, I wanted to tell a story about somebody who was part of the LGBT I community, but that he lived in a world where you could just be, you didn't come out. You just were because people always yeah. find a reason to hate each other. You know, they'll always find a reason to hate and kill each other. Cause that's like kind of what humans do. Right. So I didn't want to focus on that. And I think a lot of our characters kind of, we get kind of typecast in media as hypersexualized or stupid or frivolous or, and I just wanted to show people just being themselves that, if yeah. somebody wanted to be flamboyant, that that's not the thing that made people look twice at them. It was if they were an asshole or not. And so I wanted to focus on people valuing and not liking, liking or not liking each other based on their actions, based on their decisions and how they impact the world around them. So I created a whole new world. And yeah, well, I, that was, I was going to ask you, like, what was the process of creating? Because it's a whole vast landscape yeah, uh, I of used this world. What were those inspirations that you had Pangea, for that? Pangea. The Pangea theory that all the continents were one and separated, but I realized I needed a water source. So I put an, a lake or an ocean, not an ocean, but like a sea kind of mm-hmm. right in the middle and then surrounded. And this is all these people know. Think of it like Earth on an alternate timeline with a little bit of fantasy. Like I really wanted to go for like 60% reality, 40% fantasy. You know, and y'all, he does have a map in here. So it kind of like when you're going through the book, you have the map here yes. in which you're able to like kind like, of get a picture of. Hand drawn. I, ha- I hand drew it out and it, the name schemes and everything. Um, and I decided on the climates for each area. So as I created characters and realized where I wanted them to come from, that's what created their appearance. So I found an AI art generator like four years ago that my friend found and showed it to me. And I put in the features I wanted and it generated um the characters for me i do know what my characters actually look like but i only described them 70 80 percent because i wanted people to have their own interpretation of what they think these characters look like you, you know okay so like this was a conversation i had uh with justin uh because uh you know i i just started reading books again i just learned um <laughs> uh but I was like, uh, in reading, you know, my uh, Mooncakes book, I had a picture of what they did or Red, White, and Royal Blue. Uh, when I was reading Red, White, and Royal Blue, I'd already seen the trailer for that. So I had an idea of the two main characters, but not the rest of the characters. Um, and so like uh, the image that was put in my head by reading these books, then I asked Justin, does he have the same thing? He told me that he has a hard time actually having that image in his head. And I was just wondering when people read books, you know, and I guess there's those people who have a vivid imagination and their brains can develop these characters of exactly what they look from what they're reading. And then there's others who have a little bit harder time. But um, let's talk about those main characters. So you have like, uh, I believe, like four main characters. Yeah. Uh, Who are they? And like, what drives uh, their story? Um, Andrew goes by Andrew. His name, because he's very old, but he doesn't look it. Um, and we learn a lot more about why he is the way he is. And we see his story in this, like why he's in trouble and why he's this old. And we learn later in the next book, um, he's not what you, he's not what he even thinks, but what drives his story is kind of depression. He mm-hmm. is forced to be alive and he is not happy about it. And he kind of gets asked to go on this, not so much an adventure, but kind of, local governments kind of working together trying to say okay well, we don't know what the fuck to do let's this guy can't die so let's send him to kind of go with some people. yeah let's see if we can just kind of scare up some clues and see what's going on and um because sometimes you can't get shit done without some good old-fashioned communication and <laughs> um his he just isn't really interested in it and he's just very like fine you know and his sense of humor mm-hmm. is 
kind of not really intact. This man is, he's cursed to live like an immortal life. And because he did something really, really bad as a reaction to something that was really bad that happened to him. And he way overreacted and was punished for it. And yeah. his hope was to die. And the punishment was, no, you're going to live. Um, and so there's two male characters and two female characters that are the four main ones that you kind of see on this, mm -hmm. this book. Um, this, the other one is, uh, you have Eric, Eric is the narrator. Um, Eric's voice. So Eric's voice is the narrator voice and it's based off my voice. Now, Eric is not based off me. The character is not based off me at all, but because every character you create in a book, I learned this very quickly. All of them are reflections of you in some way, right? Like, they're coming. Well, what I was going to ask you, were any of the characters inspired by real life people or people that you knew or yes. mostly from you or like a little bit from people I knew one character, uh, Verena, the more princess ish like character. Mm -hmm. Um, her mother is based off my sister, my okay. sister, my stepsister. Um, and then this is a flattering way. This is a good thing. Like this is just, <laughs> I, I really, um, I, I love my sister and I thought this would be a great way to quietly include. She has no idea I wrote a book, but, um, but like, I really like that was, I had her in mind when I wrote that um, the characters are. Um, and also they're the, the, the way they all live. Monarchies aren't a thing. Um, they live more of like a governor family, mm -hmm. local government represent like, and that's important because the world they trade and share with each other. And that's how they, they have come to a point. We're looking at a point of relative peace. And so people can't understand why this tension is breaking out because nobody's at war with each other. There's nothing going on. That seems to be a reason mm -hmm. for all this, these bad things to be happening. So Eric is um, from an area that they're kind of the historians of the group. And he lives in the area. He's from the same area as Andrew, but like 500 years later kind of thing. And then throughout the land, there's random villages and settlements where people just kind of, you know, people move away from their cities and spring up little villages. Yeah. So there's just little points that's all through this, this land. And Andrew's from a similar area. And they're more like the historians of their countries, um, of the, like the, the big land, where because they live longer. They were gifted with longer life. So they tend to do the record keeping. They're a little bit magical. Some of them can use magic and some cannot. And that that's a point of tension in this universe that some people are able to use magic and some people can't at all and some people don't care about that and some people are super jealous of it because as you can imagine that's a great way to fan some flames um one of the characters she is the governor's daughter she is the eldest daughter her name is farina um she is kind of she's like 22 23 she is old enough to start moving into positions of, of leadership of being trusted with missions. So this is kind of her first foray into the world. So yeah. she's everything perfect. She has slightly younger identical twin sisters. Um, in their race, they are more like shapeshifters. And they are like dogs, like shapeshift into dog canine variety. And they live in this more mountainous region. Above them lives, I guess you would say their cousins, but they prefer dog form. Whereas this group that we focus on they kind of prefer their human form. They live mostly okay. human. They only really shape shift as needed if they want to. Like once they learn how to control it, they seem to just prefer human. And that later, I think, is a great way to talk about give you a chance give give the characters a chance to talk about acceptance. Like, is it because they don't want to look at it, or is it because of the practicality? Like, what was going on? Mm -hmm. um, the fourth character, um, her name is Jari. She is probably. Each character kind of has one of my traits, like yeah. a trait of mine, and then I just amplified it to 50. Because okay. if I corrected everything I didn't like about myself to create something, then it's gonna, I'm not gonna be able to write that because it's not anything. One, I don't know how to yeah. write it. two, that's not even who I am. So Jari is my blunt side. She is she means well, <laughs> the heart of gold absolutely will rally for the group, will do anything, and um she annoys the group most of the time because she has just no sense of when to like, it's not that the question that she asks is wrong. It's just really bad fucking timing. sometimes. <laughs> and, 
And if you read, if you read through, if you were, I don't know how much of it you remember because I know it's been a while since you finished it now. Sorry. Um, <laughs> she was the one who just like I remember writing some of the dialogue for her, going, "Oh man, like I'm like this is me. Like I'm not even amplifying it. It's just something <laughs> I'm not done." Yeah. Uh, and I haven't really. They it's they don't all get along. This is not a best frenzy trip. Some of them don't even know each other. They mm -hmm. wind up by accident. Um, they're kind of sending messengers to each other to the different countries. And then one of the countries decides, hey, let's just send you guys all together. There is a fifth character. She's a teenage girl. Uh, she was meant to be younger and have a bigger part later. But wow. as I was writing, I realized it, it made no sense. Her name is Amelia. And she's kind of one of my favorites. Like, I don't know really, I didn't know how to write anything about her, but I knew I needed a character like that. Mm -hmm. So I wrote a character who is really 12 to 14 years old but has been kind of really sheltered from the world a lot. So she acts more like 10, you know, like kind of still yeah. afraid to kind of step into her teenage years. And so these characters kind of, some of them are, they're all at different points of their lives, but they are tasked with the same mission. And um, I remember writing one, like there is talking about something like they're all walking across, they're hiking across a long ass field. And one of the characters comments that like, where is everything just feels like, this isn't even that far from a city. Like there's, and they come across some like settlements, like where all that's left are mm -hmm. foundations. And they're like, oh, well, there's the, so magic is kind of seeping through the world and things are going wrong. Kind of think of it as like you take the wrong medication or too much of a medication. Like it fixes one problem, but it might kill you, you know, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like seeping into the world in the wrong ways, like trees that bear fruit or suddenly poisonous fruit. Mm causing livestock to act weird have bad cow disease so um in the one andrew the older character is talking about oh this used to be a thriving settlement but some of the livestock went a little weird we don't kind of suspected maybe somebody tried to enchant their cows to produce better milk mm. or more milk and it went wrong so they kind of went a little crazy and just kind of rampaged and one of them is having like an internal monologue thought like imagining some like enchanted cow like mooing around looking for trouble and he starts to tell the group like what he's laughing about. And the Andrew, the very he's very stoic and almost all his dialogue mostly takes place in his head. Mm -hmm. The frustration of everybody in the group because they're like, you know, it's annoying when you're traveling with someone. Yeah. Like you're supposed to fucking know what they're thinking. And he's like, no, this is serious. This was bad. And, you know, he's trying to tell everyone how serious this is and, you know, how angry these enchanted cows were and nobody can take it seriously. And I'm laughing while I'm typing this. And David's like, what are you looking at? And I think <laughs> my laptop. So I show yeah. him reading the dialogue out loud. And he's like, that, why is that funny to you? And I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but like um, the weird thing of being on this serious, like I'm on a mission. Yeah. And then all you're thinking about is enchanted cows moving around <laughs> looking for trouble. <laughs> like, <laughs> um, Were there any like themes or messages uh, that you wanted you the readers to get out of reading this book i wanted people to have not just fun with it but also to see that um even your hero like everybody talks about the hero's flaw right and you know mm -hmm. but what happens when the hero has done something really really bad you know and he did something really really bad and um but i had to put it in there because i didn't want him to be a, I didn't want it to be a redeemable thing. Not everybody's going to come around to the idea of what he did. You know, he ruined a lot. Oh, and I feel like I had so much sympathy for him. I did too, but not everybody would. And the idea was that, is this a redeemable character or not? And I, I wanted that to be up to the reader. For anybody that read it, um, I don't know if you saw Amazon. My husband wrote a review. He said that the paragraphs were too long and there wasn't enough gay sex. <laughs> And I died laughing because I had people really tell me you shouldn't let your partner, your husband or your close friends be your beta readers because they're not going to give you honest feedback. And I'm like, no, these people have waited years for this opportunity. They're going to give me honest feedback. They have waited for years <laughs> to like lay me out. Well, the question is, well, I'll get to that in a second. But uh, so you do have LGBTQ themes throughout and the book, but they're really like woven in seamlessly into to the set and kind of talk about how you know you kind of mentioned it a minute ago but they're just kind of woven seamlessly into the story it's not just like hey here's a uh here's a rainbow in your flag. Face. <laughs> yeah <laughs> um the characters kind of 
more so just focus on it's like who they're attracted to. Mm-hmm. You know, Andrew is like hundreds of hundreds upon hundreds of years old. He, it's uh, safe to assume he's experimented. Um, but the the love of his uh, existence was happened to be male. And um, there's a very vivid scene where he is granted a second to kind of interact with that. Can you share like a little bit about behind the scenes challenges that you had when writing this book? Did it just come quickly and seamlessly? Were there struggles? Some days like... I wrote one or two pages and some days I really did write 30. I, I love writing so much that even when I sat and reread the book, I would rewrite, reread like five or 10,000 words sometimes before I would start mm-hmm. writing for the day. Um, and I would get really into it and kind of forget that it was what I had written. And I realized like, oh, wow, at least I like it. And I think that's right. Yeah. <laughs> um, the, some of the challenges I had were like naming things. So I use name generators to mm-hmm. not pull, to force myself to not pull from things I knew. Um, and I also didn't want the fantasy names to be so fucking weird. Because sometimes in fantasy books and stories, like the naming is like, who? <laughs> Especially when it's written by somebody named Matthew. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, like, let's be real here. I do not have an exciting cultural background that's going to allow me to draw really cool names that are really unique without it just sounding straight up like appropriation. Mm-hmm. And so that's what I wanted to avoid. And I didn't want to put that out there that any of the characters are having a hero complex. I wanted it to be the challenge was making it sound the way I, what I meant, what my point and meaning behind all their adventures is that they were tasked with something and they're just trying to do it. You have one who's just 19 and she's along for the ride and like realize, Oh, this is something I think I can do. You have one that's like, I am born to do this. I've been trained to do this. I got to impress everybody. I've got to get it right. (coughs) Um, And you have another who's like, Oh fuck. I don't want to. And then the other one who's like, who was literally just walking to there to deliver a message and was violently attacked and nearly killed. And, um, uh, and just is, goes along for the ride and, yeah, uh, and he has, but his character is nothing like me, but he is the narrator. I wrote his voice and tone. What he says is not me. How he says it is probably closer to me because I needed a narrator. Yeah. And, the narrator had to be my voice because that's who's doing most of the talking. And I knew if it was me, I could make it consistent. So if it was mm-hmm. going to be awkward, like me, then it was going to be awkward the whole time. And there was yeah. consistency. And if you know me, I think, can you hear me reading the book to you if you were reading it? Can you hear my yeah. voice in a lot yeah. of the characters? So the challenge was, I didn't know how I wanted them to say it, but I did know as I was writing it what I wanted them to say. So I wrote it very blandly and David said, all the characters sound the same. I said, that's fine, but what they're saying doesn't make sense for the story. Do you see plot holes? Do you see this, this, or this? Mm -hmm. And once I got that ironed out, because obviously there's plot holes because there's more books coming. But um, then I went back through the entire book and started adding how they said it. Did they say it with some anger? Did they, is this just like a very boring conversation or because sometimes people just have boring conversations. Not everything has to have a point in a book. Um, in mm-hmm. a book, you have a lot less time. Every prop is carefully picked. Every There is Easter eggs everywhere. And I'm not saying there's not little things here. You know, like we have a sex scene, but it's off camera. Um, but I know. I agree with David, right? Where, where's, right. The, where's the sex? More sex. I did actually write the sex scene. It, I have a copy of it. Um, but as I was writing, I realized it didn't make sense for it to happen on camera because it ha- the way it happens, the the sexual contact between them was not the focus of the story. This is what happens when two people are cornered. Um, they feel cornered emotionally and they have an opportunity to be vulnerable with each other. And um, it kind of well, just happens. Yeah, I think that's when, when I was asking you about how you had written those qualities into it seamlessly uh, that is a good example of like you just kind of wrote it in seamlessly it wasn't the focus of anything you uh uh mentioned it's a four book series uh where are you in the second book have you, have you finished writing it are you almost, almost. done what's the I'm, what's halfway, there? I'm halfway through the official part of it the other half i pretty much know what's going on and i wrote the end i wrote the last okay. i wrote most of the ending like the big thing that's going to happen and i'm still like I don't know what? if I that there. Go ahead. 
it, at least you wrote an ending. You're not going to be like lost the TV show where they just get writing, writing, writing. And then, Oh my goodness, we need an ending. Oh, this will do. I'm, yeah. No, I wrote what I wanted to happen. <laughs> so I intended to be four, possibly five. Okay. Um, but what I wanted to happen was that I wanted characters to have the opportunity to have their storyline closed at that time. So the readers will have three, maybe four more chances after they read uh, this very first book. Okay. So we're going to uh, look at real quick. Some of the reviews again, Matt, has 85% five star rating. Somebody put a uh, one star and, and then there's wrote. someone there's someone who put a one star rating. Okay, anyways, but we but do they didn't have say why they, I'm okay with that, but they didn't say why they didn't like it. I know. Say why you don't like it if you don't like it. Yeah, uh, I think so people as, are David, as David said, he liked the whole magic ideas and the character development. I uh, as Matt mentioned, uh, he said that he had liked a bit more gay in the book but that's a personal preference the paragraphs need to be shorter too <laughs> and then you have someone saying prepare to get lost in this magical land of book the author does a great job in the introductory book of fleshing out the story and what's to come well matt it's a good book congratulations Did you write i know i finally i finally read it after all these years but it's here and again I, if you honestly, have not I'm just Reddit. glad you liked it. <laughs> Go get the book. Amazon. It's on the Kindle. Uh, that's great. And it then leave a review. Kindle, by the way, uh, it is free if you have the Kindle app. And I will tell you, I, I realize people didn't know this. I get paid if even if you read it for free. I get paid by the page on Kindle. So it's okay. Like I and even if I didn't get paid, I didn't write it to make money. I wrote it because I wanted to tell a story. Everyone. We thank Matt for being here. Of course, he's always here, but today he was a guest. Uh, his book, The Ashton Chronicles. Go check it out, everybody. I, and again, we'll see y'all all next week for some more fun and some more excitement. <laughs> bye, everybody. Uh, bye. Thank you for tuning in to That's a Mouthful. If you loved what you heard today, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe right here on YouTube to keep up with all our latest episodes. And we've got more than just episodes. Join us on social media to be part of our vibrant community and keep the conversation going. Follow us, dive into discussions, and share your thoughts. Want to support the show and get some fabulous perks? Check out our Patreon page. Your support helps us bring even more great content and keeps the party going. Every bit helps, and we truly appreciate it. So, until next time, keep that mouthful.